Thanks, Doug. First up in the paleontology news is the naming and description of a new kind of therizinosaur dinosaur, which is very exciting. This animal, based on material coming from late Cretaceous age deposits in Japan, is named Paralitherizinosaurus japonicus and has actually been known for a while, with a previous study having mentioned the fossils but not fully describing them. This new paper, then, recognises them as belonging to a new therizinosaur and actually places it as a close relative of Therizinosaurus itself. The bones known for this new taxon are unfortunately quite fragmentary, comprising just one partial vertebra and a partial right hand, but bits of three claws are included in this material. This allowed for some interesting comparisons between Therizinosaur claws to be made, with the researchers finding Paralitherizinosaurus to have quite slender claws with weak flexor muscles, much like Therizinosaurus itself, and therefore providing more evidence for the claws of derived members of the group being used to hook and pull vegetation towards the mouth. Interestingly, the new taxon is also the youngest therizinosaur from Japan, as well as being the first to be found in marine deposits in Asia, perhaps suggesting that these dinosaurs were adapted for life in coastal environments. Up next is a very cool study that has looked at how trilobites mated. The paper explains that although eggs have been found in trilobite fossils before, direct anatomical and behavioural mating adaptations had not been identified in these animals until now. Looking at a specimen from the famous Burgess Shale deposit, this paper shows that these arthropods possessed specialised appendages that were likely used as claspers, used by the males to grip onto the spines of the females, much like how horseshoe crabs reproduce. It's a pretty amazing discovery, showing evidence of sexual dimorphism in these organisms, as well as indicating that these complex mating behaviours originated in arthropods all the way back in the Cambrian. And finally for this week is the incredible announcement of the first complete ichthyosaur to be found in Chile. Nicknamed Fiona, this specimen was first discovered in 2009 in the Tyndall Glacier of Chilean Patagonia, and a team of paleontologists, including Dr. Dean Lomax, were recently able to brave the harsh conditions of the region in order to extract and conserve this remarkable specimen. It's 4 metres long, is likely to represent a new genus of ichthyosaur, and comes from the early Cretaceous period. But best of all, it's a pregnant specimen containing several embryos. The team of scientists also managed to discover an amazing 23 new specimens of ichthyosaurs from the site, including juvenile individuals. It's going to be very exciting to see what new discoveries are made thanks to these incredible fossil finds. Anyway, back to Doug in the studio.